Greetings seekers, welcome to my game room again. I'd like to tell you this time about a game called Mahen. We've chosen to include Mahen in our series of games of ancient Egypt uh, because that's primarily where the game was found in the archaeological record. Um, but the game itself is very widespread from Southeast Asia all the way into North Africa through the Middle East. Over the centuries, it's met with tremendous popularity off and on. It's evolved into some other games over the centuries as well and uh, can be found in many forms. And this is one of the confusing aspects of the game and a lot of these ancient games whose original rules are lost to history. And speculation has resulted in a plethora of different versions of the rules on how to play the game. Some fairly predictable, simple race games, and some fairly complex games. Now, the board for the game Mahen uh, is a representation of a coiled snake, and apparently the name Mahen actually means coiled snake. Uh, it was a demigod, I guess, that would accompany Ra on a nightly journey through the skies. In the game, the players accompany Ra on that journey. It's one of the legends behind it. Evidence of the game goes back to about the third dynasty uh, in the tomb of Hesse Ra, uh, where examples of the game have, had been found. Um, this goes about 5,000 years ago. Many other tomb decorations since then that depict uh, fragments of the game. Boards and pieces have been found throughout the Middle East. And the pieces that have been found have been representational of a lot of different animals, uh, but mostly lions. The pawns have been marbles and uh, small cone-shaped pieces, uh, quite a lot of variety, and a lot of variety in the quantity of pieces found as well. This drawing is a copy of artwork that was found on the tomb of Hesera. Uh, it was made by John Edward Quibell in uh, 1913. And uh, it depicts several of the ancient games from the period. You can see fairly clearly that Senate is here and the pieces that go with it, as well as a game called Men, which we don't know anything about, but uh, it has its pieces. And the large coiled snake board, which obviously is Mahen, and a set of pieces that goes with that as well. This is about the oldest, most specific uh, evidence of what went with the Mahen game. Now the British uh, administrator Reginald Davies uh, was uh, stationed in Sudan in 1925 and he recorded a game played there which uh, they called the Hyena game and you may be familiar with that game as well. Uh, the Hyena game is still available today. It was published in several commercial versions over the past century or so. Very very similar in play to Mahen. Speculation therefore assumes that uh, this more modern game of Hyena is a uh, descendant of the Egyptian game of Mahen. The Peg Pastime series includes a game called Hyena Chase. Hyena Chase is kind of like a little brother to the Hyena game. Uh, it's similar in its appearance but the play is very much simplified from the original game and simplified from the Mahen game. Now in my investigations of the game I found a lot of different variations and if you go on the internet or you start looking through books you will find the same. Uh, it can be played as a simple race game. Whoever gets to the snake's head first wins. You can find some variations where and the players will make their way to the snake's head and back out again. Uh, then there are some that race the lions right along with the other players so that the lion is taking an offensive role in the race uh, alongside the other pieces. You can find variations in the number of pieces per player. Some only have one piece per player, uh, plus the lion or predator is almost always in there, all the way up to six. Now, Six players, six pieces, all those lions, you get 40 pieces on the board, it gets a little insane, so I think that's probably the max. But they're all included in our version of the game, so that you can try that one if you like. Nearly all the different variations use stick dice, um, some four, some three, like ours. Some variations use uh, tetrahedral dice, four-sided dice, and uh, the Egyptian four-sided dice with pips on 
the two of the points. Uncharacteristically, I think one of the oddest sets of rules uh, was presented by R.C. Bell. Now, normally R.C. Bell has a pretty credible speculation on uh, rules to ancient games, but his version, which he calls the snake game, um, is just a little bit strange. But if you want to look it up and give it a shot, go right ahead. It's a playable game, but it doesn't fit in with what most Egyptologists and game researchers have concluded uh, for a set of rules for Mahen. I've even seen reference to Mahen as a gambling game. Uh, I guess any game can be a gambling game uh, if you bet on the outcome, but uh, this talked about wagers based on captures and so on. Players each begin with six pegs of a single color plus one black peg called the lion. Mahan is a race game with the introduction of predators later in the game. The board depicts a coiled snake. The players will follow the path beginning at the snake's tail at the outer edge of the board and move towards the center where the snake's head rests. After a peg reaches the snake's head at the center, the peg turns back out and travels towards the tail again and off the board. That player then puts their lion peg into play. This predatory piece is used to capture, to eat, the opponent's pegs. All pegs begin the game off the board. Players will take turns tossing thick dice and moving their pegs. The active player takes up the four sticks in their fist, holding them vertically a few inches off the playing surface. They open their hand to release the stick. How these sticks land indicates the movement available for that turn. If only one stick is flat side up, the player can move one peg one space. As one would expect, two sticks flat side up indicates a move of two. However, three flat sides up results in a move of four spaces. And if none of the sticks is flat side up, this is considered a result of six. To begin each player's turn, they drop the stick dice. Only the throwing of a 1 allows a player to move a peg initially onto the board at the first space. The results on the stick dice can be used for moving any one peg the player has on the board. When a 1 is thrown after all pegs have been entered on the board, that player will take a counter, called a cheniet, then execute their move as normal. Landing on the snake's head at the center requires an exact roll. A player may spend cheniets they have collected to add an extra move to the total if they can afford it. While at the center space, a player must pay two counters to the bank at the start of the next turn to begin the return path outward. If the player does not have two counters, they must stay at the center space while they toss the stick dice in subsequent turns until they earn enough counters to do so. That means tossing ones to earn the cheniet. Once a player has returned a peg to start, they have won the race, but now their lion begins moving. For the lion's moves, it takes a result of two to enter on the board, or a payment of two cheniat. And the results of the stick dice are doubled for its movement, counting as two, four, eight, and twelve spaces. Upon reaching center, a lion must pay four cheniats to head back out. And as the lion moves back towards a snake's tail, he captures any opponent's peg he lands on or passes en route. If a player's colored pegs lands on a lion, that lion is removed from the board and starts again. If a player's lion lands on another lion, the latter lion and its player are out of the game completely. When a lion completes their journey beyond the snake's tail and off the board, that player is now out of the game. So after all the player pieces have made it off the board, the final determination of the winner is the number of enemy pieces have been captured. So whoever has captured the most wins the game. I have not found a, necessarily an indication of how to break a tie, but uh, I'm sure that there are variations on that as well. There is one weak point in the peg version of the game in that it's difficult sometimes to keep track of who's going which direction uh, or whose line belongs to who. That can be a challenge, especially with a lot of pieces on the board. Again, another reason to keep that number of pieces to a reasonable level.
Whether you play Mahen or some other game, you know, be sure to play every day. Thank you.